And now I'm going to invite up our next panelist. Angel Martinez was a former CEO of Decker's Outdoor Corporation. Many of you know him. He ran for uh, mayor and has been an amazing gift to our community uh, over many years. Uh, he also has been an incredible gift to the world. I looked at, I'm not going to read a bio, you all can read, but I didn't know any of this. This is really impressive. Um, we have amazing people on this panel, and I invite each and every one of them up. I want to say one thing before that I was just reminded by Christy. When we finish everyone speaking for their eight minutes, we are going to have questions, and those questions should be asked into a microphone. So please put up your hand and ask for the microphone before you ask a question so we can all hear it. Thank you. Angel, please come on up. Thank you, and uh, you know, it's actually very exciting to have this kind of engagement from, from the people who are here tonight and uh, a reflection of how much we all love this town, this city, this place. Hal mentioned the sense of place. This is, yes, it's a state of mind, but it's also a place. And it's a place that has to stand alone and unique unto itself, and it has to reflect the aspirations and dreams for all the people who live here. It cannot be a, a, just a simple manifestation of a greater sort of uh, retail strategy concocted by some people in New York somewhere or San Francisco. So I, I want to give us a, a, just a brief, very brief little sort of how did we get here kind of conversation. Uh, we, we are now finding ourselves in the world of retail at a revolutionary moment. This has actually n never happened before. I, well, I, let me back up. It probably happened right around the time the railroads were invented and, and railroad tracks were laid around the country when distribution became viable. And you had a major shift in how people accessed goods and services, now facilitated by the railroads. Think of the internet today as the railroad, the new railroad. It's at light speed. It's very different from the old railroad. But it has done one really critical thing. It has upended the distribution model. You used to rely on a retailer to be the place, the person, the, the purveyor of goods. And that, that person, in, in a, back in 1890, the general store had everything you needed. And that was replaced by, after the railroad, the Sears catalog. It had everything you needed. The Sears catalog was kind of like a microcosm of Amazon. And, and the Sears catalog put a lot of people out of business. It changed radically the way cities were laid out. It changed where the business districts were. We're seeing exactly the same thing happening right now. And that is at the root of our problem. We're not reacting well to a sudden revolutionary shift in what we perceive as retail, what we do as re what the business we do as retailers. So essentially, we have to rethink everything. And it's interesting, but what comes around, what goes around is what comes around. You know, what part of what we've learned in this whole, what I would consider the current retail debacle happening around the country, is that communities want to remain communities. That people want to engage with their neighbors. They want to have an environment in which there is a sense of place. They want to have goods and services that reflect the needs of their community and that create opportunity for their citizens to enjoy the elements of that retail infrastructure. And it, rather than what's happened, and we went through many, many years of, of retail being simply a, an extension of, of the mall, the mall concept. Wherever we could put a mall, we put a mall. Uh, and you saw it, malls were easy to finance, malls were ubiquitous, they were all the same, all the same retailers in every mall, it, I didn't know what town I was in. The malls all looked exactly the same. And we tried to implement that without a plan, to Al's point, without a plan, State Street ended up as a far too long mall with the same kind of stores you find in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, or Culver City, California. No sense of place, no differentiation, and we lost our purpose as a retail environment. Not just State Street, but all over the city, 
We're not alone. Every city in the country our size is going through this exact same conversation. So how do you reel it back? You have to go back to what works for the local community. What kind of stores reflect the opportunities that local people want to participate in. So for example, it's very difficult to compete with uh, Amazon.com, so don't try. We need experiential retail. We need retail that is oriented in a unique, uh, localized way. That the kind of retail that you probably wouldn't see anywhere else. A retail store that has books, a retail store that has leather goods, a retail store that has cosmetics, that is unique to that community and allows for that community to have a foundation of entrepreneurs who can afford to open a store in their community. So how does that happen? It's a collaboration. It's a collaboration by the city, by the city administration. It's a collaboration by the property owners who are critically important in this conversation. It's a collaboration by business owners and downtown organization and the citizens of the community who demand that they have a place where they can bring their families where they can have unique things that they want to buy, stuff that's, that's quality, that is not in competition with Amazon because Amazon does not provide a shopping experience where people might even know your name and remember that you came in uh, two weeks ago and what you bought. And it's curious to know, to see that this is kind of what's coming around again. This is how it was when I was a kid in the Bronx in New York. Uh, everywhere we went on, in our neighborhood, every retailer knew our name. They knew what we bought. They knew when we went in the store. They had things waiting for us that we actually might like to buy. And I think that that catered to a sense of community, even in a city like New York, even in a borough like the Bronx, which had its own neighborhood, its own feel, its own character. Santa Barbara has lost that, and we can regain it. And we need to regain it. This is exactly the opportunity in a revolutionary moment where you get to have revolutionary ideas. And these aren't actually that revolutionary. They're just people-centric, people-oriented, community-oriented ideas. So my opinion is that this is a moment in time that we should not squander. We need, to, we need to sort of understand that every community our size in the country is going through the same thing right now. And they've got, there are ideas, there are tremendous ideas that are circulating among these, in these communities. I invite you to look at the website uh, for the city of San Luis Obispo, which has their economic development plan, their plan for downtown, which is inspiring. And it came together with business owners, property owners, city administration, and concerned uh, citizens uh, who had an interest in the environment. Cal Poly San Luis Obispo had an interest in what's going on downtown. Uh, advocates for homeless people, for the bicycle people, on and on, they all got together and crafted what I think is a brilliant plan, and now they're gonna spend the next 10 years executing against it. And, and it, 10 years seems like a long time, but it's actually not that long if you actually feel like you're making progress. And what's frustrating for people is that when you have a plan and then you don't see that you're making progress, nothing changes, nothing happens. It all starts with small steps and then migrates toward bigger steps. We could start by cleaning downtown. It should be improved from a just sanitary point of view. I live downtown. I walk downtown. The rain is good. It's washed away the urine smell. And that's, you know, I've had friends come into downtown, and we took a nice stroll in the evening. And besides the urine smell and the uh, being accosted by vagrants, you also got the feeling that you weren't welcome. There were hawkers selling you perfume sticks as you walk by and all that kind of nonsense that goes on. That is not a welcoming environment. We need to clean that up. That's easy. That's a force of will. That's people just getting together and saying, you know what? We need to start paying attention to the experience that people have when they actually walk with their kids down our pride and joy, which is State Street or Coast Village or Upper State or anywhere else where we want to show our pride in our community. So these are the things that I think we need to do. First, small steps. And while we're doing that, those are the obvious things. Let's take the big step of creating a revolutionary new vision for what we want our business environment to look like in this community. And I know we'll accomplish it. I know we have enough people in this community who love it 
and the expertise to make it happen. And I know the willingness from the city of Santa Barbara to see a future that is uh, better than it ever was before. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. 